el centro de la pampa vive un pimiento. Sol y viento para su vida. Sol y viento. Hello, I'm Patrick Barnard. Welcome to the ninth edition of the Pimento Report. It's a funny old April day in Montreal, 2009. Today we are going to hear from Simon Milne, geographer, professor at the Auckland University of Technology and director of its New Zealand Tourism Research Institute. Simon Milne is a man with a keen sense of place. He's taught in Montreal, he loves this city, he also knows Europe well and of course his native New Zealand. He's a proponent of what's known as sustainable tourism. And we're going to get a sense of what he means by keying into three places that he uses as examples. The first is the western Southland of New Zealand, then the north of Labrador in Canada, and a neighborhood in Montreal called Mile End. Simon Milne visited this city recently, so I went to see him in a Mile End apartment here in Montreal, and I asked him, does sustainable tourism, if it is the genuine article, require a certain measure of social justice? It's a good question. I think uh, on one level you could argue that it does, um, but I think what we need to realise is that in the short term we may be heading towards social justice as the long-term goal. What we may see in the short term may not necessarily equate to what you would call social justice, but perhaps that's the long-term goal or long-term aim. And I think, to be honest with you, if I was to look around the world right now, I would not see any tourism that I would call truly sustainable. From a social justice perspective, from a, an environmental resource use perspective, I think whatever tourism we're looking at at the moment can be made more sustainable. The first example I'd like to give you is from uh, the very uh, southwest of the South Island of New Zealand, an area that we call Western Southland. Uh, this is a region like many others around the world that has gone through some pretty severe processes of economic restructuring. The traditional agricultural economy has, uh, has declined somewhat. Um, there's a major flow from this rural area of young people to, towards the urban areas of the country and also to Australia and Europe and North America to find work and to find uh, stimulating lives. Like many rural isolated areas, this region's turned to tourism as a potential source of income. Uh, for some it may be a supplement to farm income, so there we see the emergence of what we might call farm tourism. Um, for others it may be a sole uh, job, uh, running a, a, a whitewater rafting activity down a river or taking people out as a fishing guide. The trouble for this, or the problem for this region, as we see in many parts of the world, is how do you attract, how do you capture that elusive tourist? How do you actually get them to spend some time in your region when in reality you're not really on the tourist map? For most visitors to New Zealand, Queenstown is the major resort that they want to go to, or Dunedin is the large city they want to visit. And somewhere in the middle is Western Southland. So we've been working with this, commu this set of communities, this group of communities, to say, well, how do we get the visitors to spend a little bit more time here? How do we get them to understand the sense of place that they're coming to? What are the stories that your community has to share with these people? What are the ways that you can give them another reason to spend a little bit more money? Or can give them some information about how they may behave more appropriately when they're in a particular environmental or community setting? Um, and so the, the focus for us in this sense has been the use of the internet. Uh, it's a very powerful tool for communities to build their stories, their content to share with the rest of the world and the tourists. In this podcast, Lex Wiley speaks to Neville Wilson. He was advised by the marriage that worked for him to get married. Or take a married woman for a wife, but to take a married woman for a wife, and that would be to the benefit of everybody. Mary and White. One of the fascinating things about modern tourism, you can't forget this, it is arguably the world's biggest industry. 
Simon Milne and the New Zealand Tourism Research Institute have been active in helping local groups in various parts of the world use the internet to get their local message directly out to visitors. On one occasion, Simon Milne was in the northern Labrador community of Nain in Canada and found that the people there had developed their own contacts with indigenous Maori groups in New Zealand. Well, a few years ago, uh, I was lucky enough to spend some time in the, the Labrador community of Nain, um, which is a very northern community on the Labrador coast and not too far away from a new national park that's been established in the Torn Gap Mountains. Uh, that community has been very interested in how it can link into that new national park as, a, as a, a base from which tourists travel, as a place where tourists come and gather information and knowledge before they make the, the journey to the north. One of the things that was most interesting from the time I spent there as we were talking about sustainable tourism strategies and as we were talking about the way in which uh, community development could go hand in hand with tourism was the fact that there was a real knowledge about uh, some of the initiatives that have been taken among Maori uh, groups in New Zealand to help sustain and grow their language through uh, the so-called kohanga reo or language nest system where children are learning language from a very young age. Were you surprised that, that they knew about this? On one level, yes, but on another, on another level, no, because a lot of the people in that community were, were very well versed with the internet. They had been able to partake in programs that had indigenous people from New Zealand traveling to the north and vice versa. And I think uh, in this day and age, those kinds of um, models and examples can spread much more quickly than they have done in the past and can be a, become a quite a powerful resource for communities to take ideas, not copy, but to take good ideas and perhaps blend and, and develop them so that they fit the local context more effectively. Simon Milne is also concerned with sustainable tourism in cities and neighborhoods like Montreal's Mile End District that Milne has actually lived in himself. And in the same way that tourism touches the lives of rural communities, it touches the lives of urban inhabitants. We know, for example, in this part of Montreal, that we're very close to Mount Royal, which is a park that attracts a lot of visitors. We're very close to St. Lawrence Boulevard, which is a major tourist attraction and a place where uh, people come, whether there's a Formula One race or not. It's still a place that people visit. And I think one of the challenges, just as it is for West and Southland, one of the challenges for an urban neighbourhood like, like this area of Mile End, is to say, how do we connect tourists more with a sense of place? How do we have those visitors that are travelling to the top of Mount Royal for a tour or whatever, how do we have them spend a little bit more time in this neighbourhood, buy a coffee, buy some souvenirs? This is not a neighbourhood that's developed for tourism. It's not old Montreal where you find souvenir shops. What it is is a neighbourhood that's been built and developed for community. And for many tourists, that's a more appealing feature than visiting a generic souvenir-ridden kind of old city. I think the main thing I would like to say is um, that, that there is a danger in creating what I would call a false dichotomy between tourism and sustainable tourism. We have to think of all tourism as something that is made more sustainable and we've seen too many examples around the world of tour operators and countries and businesses saying we are an eco-tourism operator or we only offer sustainable tourism packages. That may be the case, but the bottom line is we need to think about all tourism being made more sustainable. Simon Milne spoke in a Montreal apartment about a truly global issue, sustainable tourism. And this video, we hope, is part of an ongoing internet bridge between Quebec and New Zealand. I'm Patrick Barnard saying goodbye for now from the Pimento Report. In el centro de la Pampa. Vive un pimiento, sol y viento pa' su vida, sol y viento, sol y viento pa' su vida.